Well, hello, well parents. It is me, Jordan, back at you with another parent interview. I have with me today the Sladens. Say hello, Sladens. Hey, you guys. What's up? Going? <laughs> and this, uh, Mike is a teaching pastor, equipping pastor at the well, as well as runs off the front. And his wife, Jen, is a jack of all trades, and most of all has to put up with him. And so, uh, <laughs> except my name's not Jen, even though. Oh my I'm, gosh! I love my. <laughs> I do. I do love my my close friend. She's Jen, and, with mistakes and honesty. It's all good, man. Yeah, she is like a sister to me, and I will answer to that. But I'm not Jen. Mich so. <laughs> uh, in my head, Michelle uh, and Jen are just two great women of God, and they're just, you know, up on the. <laughs> you know, you guys become one. There's some sort of like. <laughs> Amalgus blob, blob of greatness. <laughs> See, Jordan, you let off with vulnerability and, and mistakes. It's good, man. You know what? Yeah, you Pickle know. Jen would be a compliment for me, so it's all good. <laughs> I have a toddler, and he ruins my brain, so it's fine. It's okay. Uh, so, anyways, uh, tell us, Jen, Jen, Michelle, Jen, Michelle, <laughs> just call me Jen, Michelle, Jishelle, Jishelle. Uh, <laughs> that's your guys' what the kids would call ship name. Yes. Um, so, yeah. uh, anyways, this is going great so far. Um, <laughs> Michelle, tell us, uh, people may be familiar with Mike, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, well, let's see. I'm currently in school because that's what you do at 44. You go back to school and you do all the things you didn't do the first time around and you start a new career. And so, um, yeah, I'm working on a master's degree right now to go back and get my teaching credential because I want to teach seventh and eighth grade math. I know that sounds a little insane, but God people bless probably look you. At you. Well, people probably look at you the same way when you tell them you're a youth pastor, right? I mean, <laughs> but well, I'm no, high I'm school, so K.A. is the real saint. <laughs> yeah, I like those little seventh and eighth graders. They're, they're fun. It's a great age. You know, the only other junior high math teacher I know, her name is Michelle. It's not Jen. Uh, it is not. <laughs> oh, what if her name was Jen? Um, but I'm funny. The, uh, no, Michelle Reed. So, yeah. Okay. Peggy Reed's daughter. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. So you're in school. And then uh, tell us about your family. What uh, You guys are a girl household. Uh, how many and what ages? We are a girl household, except for Tucker, our dog. We finally adopted a, a little male. Um, <laughs> we had to pay for him, though. <laughs> um, we have an almost 19-year-old that's a freshman in college. We have a 17-year-old that's a junior. And then we have um, an almost, actually, here in two weeks, um, Ella's going to be 14. So, yeah, lots of fun ages. <laughs> yeah, Mike, you're outnumbered pretty hardcore. There's a lot of estrogen in our home and not a lot of <laughs> testosterone, so, yeah. <laughs> That's why you had to get that dog as a partner in crime. That is correct. That's awesome. Makes you a better man, I'm sure. I, uh, uh, so, can you guys just tell us what this time's been like for you as parents and your family dynamic, good and bad? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it kind of hit us like a tidal wave, just trying to figure out what to do and how to adjust to the kids immediately being home and um, you know, I think the first couple of days it was, we're all trying to get our bearings and the kids are like, dude, it's summer vacation. Like, heck yeah. <laughs> you know, and there was certainly an element of that where there was some fun and the ability to do stuff that we could before. But I think now that we're what, in week four, um, we're trying to adjust to a new normal and figure out our rhythms and how we work as a family. But it was, it was pretty overwhelming at first and Michelle's schedule hasn't changed at all with online school and you know we still have work to do you and I Jordan so we're still trying to figure that out so yeah yeah and I think at the beginning it did feel a little bit like summer vacation and so after about three nights of that and people not getting up until almost noon we did kind of have to step in and um just you know sit the kids down and say hey you know within reason what is this going to look like and kind of establish some things but um i think for me there was a meme going around that had like the schedule like 
this is what they do at 8, 8.30, 9.30. And I personally got really excited and thought that was the coolest thing ever. But that's how I operate, and that's just, I mean, we very quickly. We that, that was that. for me, not our kids. <laughs> you put me on a schedule. But, um, yeah, I mean, I think that's how I operate. And so I've had to kind of back up and say that's not healthy for all of our family necessarily. And so I would say, if anything, it's just been this, um, every day feels a little bit different, if I can be honest. I mean, some days there's schoolwork that needs to be done. Some days there's not. And so we've tried to be, you know, set a few things that we want the kids doing every day. But, um, you know, we've, we've tried to really be careful that we're not micromanaging that. So that would be my tendency and I will drive everyone crazy. <laughs> yeah. So what is, uh, tell me about your like family rhythm. Is there anything different that you, uh, feel like wasn't as present before all this? Yeah, I'd say there's probably one thing that's not different, but definitely highlighted. And then one thing that is for sure different. Um, I think since we had kids early on, one of the things that we always wanted to protect was our dinner table. And that's where we come to together and, and talk and, and share life. So I think now that our kids are heavily involved in sports, the activities have ceased and there's not as much running around at, you know, dinner time hours and um, activities and student ministry and all that kind of stuff. Sorry. Earthquake. Seriously. Stop shaking. Are we still having an earthquake? What's going on here? Who knows? I think I got passionate right there for yeah. a second. Um, so I think having just the consistency even more so of the dinner table for us is where our family comes together and talks. Uh, I think the other thing that's been really good for um, just for all of us is, is Sundays being able to attend church together, uh, though it's in our living room, but it's, it's the sense of, man, we can sit, we can talk, we can work through a sermon discussion guide together and be in our pajamas and hang out and, and talk, but it's been, it's been rich to be able to all do that. All five of us on a, on a weekly basis now has been, it's been refreshing. Yeah, for sure. So I agree with that. So I would like the kids to take on <laughs> cooking dinner. <laughs> so we're not eating out very much. And so there's a lot of cooking going on, but um, no, we've had some opportunities to, um, we had an opportunity that came up to serve and I'd never gotten to teach my kids how to bake bread of all things. And um, so we've gotten to do some things like that, just um, spontaneous things that normally we wouldn't have time to do. And so I've just, we've tried to be um, intentionally spontaneous, if that makes sense. And so as things, opportunities come up, just um, take advantage of those, but again, not necessarily schedule everything. Yeah, that's great. Is there anything that you feel like um, with the whole home church thing has been a win? Yeah, what about from your perspective? Um, I think because, I mean, we're just not, I guess when the kids were little, um, you know, we did very intentional devotional time with them, you know, before bed and a lot of those things. But as they've gotten older, I would say that's changed a lot. We don't, um, you know, we don't have <laughs> weekly time where we sit around and um, necessarily have intentional devotional time as a family. And so I think that's kind of what it's felt like is just really getting to hear from them a lot more on a deeper level. I mean, there's things that come up, you know, as they encounter issues at school or, you know, just problems that they're having or things that they're working through where we're having individual conversations. But I would say for me, and um, I just really, really have loved hearing more from them. Um, it seems like they've just had more time to process and sit and talk. And so um, I would say that's been amazing, just the questions that are prompted and then the discussions that happen as a result of that. Yeah. We had a sweet kind of time praying the other morning, which was, or evening, I should say, which was just mm -hmm. kind of rare for us for all of us praying. So that's been kind of cool just to hear my kids and hear their devotional mm -hmm. life and their walk with God come out. That was, that was really rewarding. Yeah. What do you think has been sort of hardest for your kids during this time? Yeah, I think we have a scale of kids in terms of personalities from extrovert to introvert. And I think some of the ones like, for instance, Madison, who is working at Trader Joe's um, 30 plus, 35 hours a week and doing school online, her world's actually gotten a lot busier. Um, so this isn't restful or relaxing for her. So she's 
is we're talking about how this is hitting us as a family. She's like, I don't know what you're talking about. My world's upside down, um, that sort of thing. And I think for some of our kids that are more on the extroverted end of the spectrum, like this is hard for them. Like they miss their friends, um, want to go out. We're trying to be wise about, like I think early on we had a little bit more leash. We're like, yeah, week one, okay, it's not a big deal. And now we're like, ah, girls, we need to rein it in. We're not leaving the house to go to hang out with friends. That's just that, that dispensation's over. So I think just feeling bad a little bit about like, look, I know you want this and I know it would be good for you, but we just, we just can't right now. We need to be good citizens and good stewards of what we know. And that's hard. So. Yeah. And I think they're just all three very different and unique. And um, that just kind of, it reminds me of the importance of really having to look at your kids individual bents and look at their personalities and go, okay, this one needs a little bit more structure. This one probably needs to go FaceTime with their friends and I need to encourage that. Um, and for them to be as creative as possible, you know, that they can. And so we're just trying to really look at each individual kid and say, you know, what, do, what do they need? And, and, you know, and even asking them, them that directly, just checking in um, a few, I guess it was last week, we just kind of asked them, you know, we, we kind of operate on tanks around here. So we talk about emotional, spiritual, and physical tanks. And so just asking them, how are you doing in each of those categories and kind of explaining to them what those are and having them do a little bit of self-evaluation, um, not just tell them, you know, what we need to be doing as a fan, but family, but really engage them and say, hey, how are you really doing in these areas? And that was good because it gives them an opportunity to speak to those things and self-evaluate. That's great. Yeah, I've, I haven't heard it put that way before. So you said emotional, spiritual, and physical tanks. And uh, would you say that that's like sort of as they're older, one of the main ways that you engage them in like accountability as well as just checking in? Yeah, I would say so. Um, you know, and I mean, I think that accountability is it's different for each age category right now, you know, and so. Um, our kids that, you know, when they were little, we've, like I said, we really tried to um, impact them with some, you know, strategic discipleship and what being in the word looked like and what it meant to do a lot of um, things. And now that they've gotten older, we really want them to learn how to develop those things on their own instead of what I call it, cramming, cramming everything down their throat and making them do those things. And so we really try to instill in them um, the idea of, you know, thinking about the why. Why do we do those things? Why are they important? Um, but yeah, that's definitely probably developed over the years. Um, not something that we, you know, did with them as young kids. It would look differently if they were younger, you know, right now. And I think we've given our kids a lot of leash in that area. We, we worked harder now, as Michelle said, and now it's, look, we really want this to become your own, especially your walk with the Lord. So we haven't, mandated stuff as much as we've said, hey, these are some good things to be doing on a daily basis somehow, you know, what, whatever that looks like for you. But we've really tried to let them run with that and screw up in that, like we screw up in that. And, and um, yeah. That's cool. Um, do you feel like, uh, well, I've gotten a lot of questions about like sort of screen management and media and social media from parents and things and I was just wondering you know everybody's different as far as how they create regulations especially with the different in personalities and every family's different so I, I just I like asking the question of like what are your conversations like with your with your kids around um, like screens and just managing social media and time that they spend in those places yeah, I mean, I would say we start with one of our family philosophies, which is just trust. We work on the basis of trust and honesty. Uh, and you get a lot of leash when you've demonstrated that you've been honest with us and forthright, even when you've blown things and regardless of what category it's in. But when you're confessional and come to us and do those things, you get a lot of leash. When you don't do that, that leash gets pulled in. So with our kids in particular, we've given them some latitude there um, to 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 make good decisions. And then we've also said, listen, we recognize that, man, we, we can't put you in a bubble and you're gonna be potentially exposed to things that aren't 
what you want to see. And if, if those times ever happen, you need to know you can come to us, you can talk to us about it, you're not in trouble. Um, but we want to we want to navigate that conversation. And we've told them, hey, here are the things that we're concerned about as you're on these different platforms that mommy and daddy's 44 year olds don't know, like Jordan and KO do, which thank you for your videos on that, Jordan. That was good to just I appreciate you instructing us as parents, as old fogies, as to what's out there and what we need to be aware of. So we've just tried to maintain that um, dialogue and they know that we're gonna be asking periodically and talking to them about that. Um, Jordan, I think one of the harder parts right now, as Michelle and I were talking about this earlier, is that's their only interaction to like to FaceTime and interact with their friends. Yeah. So there's just a hard balance of, man, how do we, how do we allow them to connect and yet not get lost in TikTok for you know hours doing a bunch of nothing, uh, blowing up time. Yeah, I mean that's great. I think um, can you? I think uh, you know without talking about specifics for your own family, can you talk about, I, I heard you say, um, here are some things we're worried about in your engagement that we would want for you to come to us with. Can you just be specific as far as the things that you as parents were, uh, when you had that conversation, what you were talking about? Yeah, we talked about, I mean, I think the biggest one for us obviously is pornography and just saying, listen, we know that um, on the internet in the day and age that we live in, that's a click away from anyone that wants to go find it. And we're not assuming that you want to go find it, but um, I don't know how um, all these different platforms are managed and what content they allow and don't allow on their site. So if you click on some video that clicks to another video, and all of a sudden you're in some place that you didn't mean to be, uh, that's a very real possibility. And those images don't go away. Like you just don't forget those. So. Um, that's, that's something that we've tried to just discuss with them and talk about it and walk through uh, our past and my past with that and the same thing. Listen, you know, I've, I've stumbled across stuff like that. It's not something that um, I'm proud of or that you need to be, you need to wear that, that I wrestle with that still. As a grown man, those temptations are still present in my life. I have to work with those, talk about those with my wife and be open and honest with those or they're going to, you know, they're going to be potentials of struggle for me that, that aren't good. So we've tried to lead in that dynamic a little bit and just be honest with them about what's out there and as innocent as they may be, uh, they may come across those things. Yeah. And I would say too, um, not just the pornography, but you know, there's a lot of um, things out there that our girls are looking at where they're looking at girls working out. And I mean, there's so much stuff where people are showing off their bodies. And I think that leads to a different type of temptation. Um, you know, for girls with body image struggles and just recognizing that what you look at and what you feed your mind is what's going to overall affect you. And so um, we're trying to just be open and honest with them about the reality of what that intake does over time and how unhealthy it can be because that becomes the new norm and then that becomes the standard and then somehow God's word and those things that really should be driving our lives get, you know, either snuffed out or put aside or they're not as big of a priority. And so we really just want our kids to be able to see that stuff and discern. And then there's times where we've just said, you're not mature enough to make a discernment decision. So we're going to have some convictions for you until we believe that you're old enough to handle that. So. Mm. What does that look like? It's messy and it's hard. And, you know, we had a situation a few months ago where we just came to the realization that we weren't really holding our kids accountable enough with their phones. Um, we're not ones to go on their phones and read their texts or anything like that. Um, however, we've probably been too lenient with how much we let them be in their rooms looking at their phones and on their computers. And sometimes they're doing a lot of homework, but we had to establish kind of a new rule where we said, okay, now at night by, I don't know, 10 o'clock or so, unless you're working on homework, your phones are charging downstairs at a, in a charging station area. Um, and that became kind of the new normal. And it was really messy because Madison, technically, if she was off at college, we wouldn't have that, we wouldn't have that authority to say that. And so we said, you you don't have that rule. 
We just want you to be, we trust you, you're still under our roof, we hold you responsible. So it, in a sense, it felt very unfair for the other two. Mm, and it yeah. almost felt, um, I would say almost like a, a punishment, kind of like, well, why all of a sudden are you putting a rule in? Have we done something wrong? And we just were honest and we said, no, you haven't done anything wrong. It's just, we feel like God's putting this on our hearts to hold you guys accountable more. And, you know, it was messy. It's hard. They did not like it, you know? And yeah. So. Yeah. Sometimes parenting means just making difficult decisions and riding that wave for a while. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Being willing to adapt. Well, um, are you guys like able to have any fun together? What do you guys feel like <laughs> is fun in your time at home? Absolutely. And I think that's one of the things that, you know, we've, we've spent a lot of time talking to you about the kind of serious side of things, but no, we've, we're very competitive. We play a lot of games. Um, everybody makes fun of me a lot, <laughs> a, a lot. I get made fun of a lot. <laughs> And so, but, um, yeah, I, we do, we've played a lot of card games and board games and we have like one of those, okay, so this is how, you know, we're a girl house. We do not have an Xbox or a, what's the other one, the popular one, PlayStation 4. The newest, um, gaming system we have is a Nintendo Wii. And it's, oh, nice. I, I know we're so cool. The, <laughs> the original one, not Wii U. So. Yeah, not even the Wii U, the original one. Well, now they have and, Nintendo Switch, so you're three <laughs> behind. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So we've just done that. We took it. We did a bike ride the other day and just drove around the Clovis Trail. And um, we have a kind of a walk outside by our neighborhood that we've literally just exhausted and so but it's been good sometimes all ki all the kids come sometimes there's just one or two but um yeah we've just so is your rhythm um you leave those as an open opportunity yeah i mean it's it's not everybody all the time uh it's like who wants to go and we're gonna get out here we're gonna go for a walk we're gonna play a game we're gonna watch a movie uh you guys in you don't have to be so yeah we've given them flexibility in that yeah I is there any type very... of schedule to any of that like this night we do this or uh not necessarily <laughs> more of it's like you know we're, we're a work first play later type family just with our personality so michelle's got school the kids are all working on their their homework i'm doing stuff in the morning so it's usually towards the afternoon where we have bandwidth and free time to do it and then we're just throwing stuff out there but there is like today we said listen like three o'clock we're all shutting it down it's good friday um you know, Brad mentioned, hey, let's watch Passion of the Christ together as a body. And we said, we're going to do that, and we're going to discuss it. We're going to take communion together as a family. This is not optional. And not that we were fighting them on it, but, you know, we just said, hey, we're, this is what we're going to do. So we told them last night the schedule so they knew and could prepare and get out of bed and go from there. So, yeah. <laughs> and I've heard of some families doing, like, you know, mimicking the TikTok videos. And I threw that out there as a suggestion, as a bonding moment. But someone didn't want to do that so <laughs> yeah he's not a dancer there's no uh no yeah you're gonna have to find one all the way is, through is, you're gonna have to find one that's like him sitting in a chair and you guys doing something around you know I don't, yeah <laughs> that, could, that could work that could work really yeah not i'm not really excited about that but that that, that hurts less <laughs> <laughs> actually i think if truth be told i would be probably the one that was most excited about doing the tiktok video and i would just embarrass everybody else so yeah well maybe jen good. and i could do one. Oh, there you go and then <laughs> yeah create a dual account and you guys can just uh yeah i had some students send me a a video and were like you and jamie need to do this and it was like a hat flipping thing or something i can't remember exactly what it was and i was like well if you want me to get famous, I guess I'll make a TikTok. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> You're already a big deal, dude. <laughs> oh, man. I think, um, well, I appreciate your guys' time. Um, is there anything that you guys would just say as sort of a parting word to parents as encouragement? Oh, you first. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, something that did kind of come up, I was trying to put myself in the shoes of some of the younger moms that do have kind of the 
the craziness right now and trying to keep up with just toddlers that are stir crazy or adolescents that are stir crazy. And there's just a lot of stuff out there. Um, I love Pinterest, but it kind of can stir in a, a lot of guilt in comparison. And I just think the biggest thing right now is we're all trying to figure this out. Um, there is, you know, we've talked about this. There's really no right or wrong per se. Um, I think what works for one family is not going to work for another. And you could drive yourself crazy trying to do the 10 things that the other family's doing. And, you know, if routine works for their family and that's going great, I say more power to you. <laughs> um, but for some families, that's not going to work. And so I would just encourage these moms that are, you know, um, and dads too, that are just tired and exhausted and feel like they need to be doing more or should be doing more to just really be careful about that guilt and what's driving that and the comparison. I think there's just, there's a need to survive in a sense right now and be intentional, but I think there's just a, it's, it's a hard balance right now. Yeah. I think for me, it's, it's brought out a desire to really, it, it's really, it's really brought to the surface what I truly believe. My, my theology that I live, not the theology that I say I believe. So as a dad who wants to fix things for my kids, that's my MO and not always what they need, but that's usually what I want to do when things are hard and to want to control things. I can do neither of those right now. So it's really teaching me to say, man, do I really trust that God's sovereign through this? Is he in control? And can I lean into that and live that? Because that's, that's, that's a struggle. And it's been a struggle since day one. Well, appreciate you guys. Uh, super thankful for uh, all the things that you guys have influenced me and my family over the years. And um, I hope that people find this helpful and at the very least can laugh at my interview capabilities so um i'll uh i'll see you guys later and uh thanks for doing this all right thanks, thanks brother. Jordan. appreciate you bye